What is up? Welcome back to Otaku. Back again, reading three more of the submissions to the now closed Tezuka Manga Contest. That is the 100th anniversary special. This week, we are doing three mangas, two of them by the same mangaka. We're going to start with The Fall by Rei Kurayami. I hope I say that right. Cafe Bois by Sastra123. And then we're going to finish it off with Divas by Rei Kurayami again. We're going to go in that order, so buckle up. The first one is a little bit of a psychological thriller, so I have a lot to tell you about, and here we go. We open up with a young man. His name is Ame Funjinuma, and he's seeing a therapist because he supposedly killed his parents. He's distraught, and the therapist asks him to just start from the beginning, which is a very usual thing. Like, re-explain -re me the story. Ame explains that after returning from high school, he noticed that something was off at his home. And then he saw both of his parents tied up, laying on the floor. Just as he sees this, a shadowy figure appears behind him with a gun. He says he has some loose ends to tie up, but he's a nice guy. So he's going to let Ame choose which one of them he wants to live. Ame tries to do the classic stoic approach and yells to kill him instead, which we have seen many a times. And the shadowy figure responds with, is that fear I'm sensing from you? But that's some resolve you got there, willing to die for them. And then agrees to take him up on his offer and says, on the count of three. So Ame closes his eyes, ready to die. But then the man goes, not. And we cut back to the therapist session. We here find out that the man then killed both of his parents and ran away. The therapist asks, if this is true, how are you at fault? Surely you're still following their teachings. Ame agrees that he learned how to respect others from them, just like they did to their employees. And they loved him as well as each other. But then the therapist kind of chimes in here and says, but what if they're lying? They only <laughs> pretended to be happy and they treated their employees poorly which probably means they were murdered by one of them. Ame, hearing this, is just like, fuck no. Like, they're like you're lying. The therapist responds, would you believe me if I told you I used to be one of their employees? <gasps> and we see an it image of uh, Ame looking up, pissed off. And the therapist says that's a good reaction. They're no longer here, so you need to be able to think for yourself. He asks Ame how he's feeling. Frustrated and angry is what Ame replies. And the therapist goes to suggest maybe it's because your parents didn't get any justice for their murder. Like most people, they probably won't get any true justice. With our current justice system, I personally believe a life sentence isn't nearly enough for a crime like murder. We then see Ame. He's sitting on a bed looking at a picture of him with his two now deceased parents. And we begin to see a pair of hands once again come up from behind him. And this time they cover his eyes. The figure kind of begins mocking him about justice. Just goes, justice, ah, justice, ah. And then we see Ame start to freak out and say, I'm losing my mind. We cut to Ame. He's now leaving the hospital. And we see the therapist has given him a special set of glasses. And says, when you feel like you've seen enough of this world, put these on. Not long after leaving, we see a girl run out from behind a corner screaming, help, help. They lock eyes as she kind of falls to the ground. Ame stares at her and gasps. And kind of thinking, why must this world take from us? As he's approached by a man who is wielding a bat. Ame continues thinking, if this world is truly an unjust one, and then opens up the eyeglass case and puts them on. He kneels down to help the girl and asks if she is all right. The man wielding the bat then comes up behind him and tells him to back off, pal. She's mine. Ame turns around, now wearing the glasses, says, silence, trash. And he continues his thought, saying, then, I will destroy the world. Next panel, we see the man that was wielding the bat try to speak, but nothing is coming out. The man starts to become distraught, obviously, because now his voice isn't working. Ame continues thinking, wonder why you can't speak anymore it's because dot 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 stands up turns and whips his head back towards him all majestic and so cool like and thinks you're weak just then we see the man now completely scared out of his mind and a nice little butterfly begins flying by ame says is that fear i'm sensing in you <laughs> not even a hint of resolve in your eyes very well die and then the man does just that and fucking dies and you know the butterfly was so cool with it it just flies up and lands on ame's fist the girl then asks, what did you do to him? Ame doesn't answer this and goes to walk away. The girl grabs his vest and says, uh, thank, thank you. Ame turns and thinks she's, she's a loose end. He says, you're welcome, and then stares at her and says, forget you ever saw me. And then we get a black page at the end, and that's it. So um, some, yeah, some psychological crazy. shit. The therapist is setting him up. It's all kinds of fucked. He had his parents set in front of like killed in front of him and then some vigilante therapist is like i'm gonna fuck this guy right up it's gonna be real good well what if you i'm almost thinking it was him that murdered his parents. so i went That's back and i because you see so there's two parts you get to see the actual killer you get to see his eyebrows at one mm -hmm. part and then you can see his facial structure the eyebrows do not match 
All right. Oh my god. Eyebrows do not match the therapist. You but went the full on facial detective. structure is identical. Okay. So and on like one of the last pages, you get to see like the smiling, and I don't know if that's meant to be the killer or if we're now looking at the therapist smiling, but you kind of get to see the outline of a uh, smiling face. It looks so spot on to what the therapist looks like. So I think so as well. I think the par- the therapist has killed him, like done this whole rigmajig thing to then get to be his therapist. And they're like, I'm going to fucking like, I saw something in this kid. I'm going to oh. make him be the next like fucked up guy. That's straight up inception. Wild. The whole thing. Yeah. Like, I, I think was... he was like out killing people and he was, he was going to probably kill the kid. And he's like, Oh, I like, I like your resolve. And it's like, I'm going to fuck you right up. Maybe he sauce him where it was like he's like Itachi. Yeah. Oh, the, the the guy wears glasses. So I wonder if it's some special set of glasses. Uh, the the therapist wears them. So I wonder if he gets that murder intent. Because like it's weird that all of a sudden, uh, what's his? He was part? able to like kill the guy. Yeah, he like silenced him and then is able to kill him. So I wonder if the OP glasses is are... fuck. By the way, yeah. if you could just it's say like death, whatever, though. yeah, if you just say whatever you want and it happens, like oh fuck. See, like in the Bleach universe, you're just able to count obnoxiously high numbers. In this universe, you're able to just straight up control everything, you yeah. know? So this so one is a bit different. more realistic to our IRL world. So, yeah. yeah. That's why Sam always wins the arguments, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so the, the art it's style the of this one, one I thought was pretty good. Um, yeah. It's obviously not the most spectacular art we've ever seen, but I thought it did its purpose perfectly. And there's some yeah. shots of, like, that shot where he turns his head and looks at the killer. I was like, okay, that's really Fair? well done. Like, that's, nice. And his eyes are, like, fucking bulging and shit. It's like, that's oh, very yeah, reminiscent he's crazy. of less in high school. Okay. Yeah. That's a that's well, a weird point to say there. I meant the hair, you know, of having <laughs> okay. the long hair. Okay. okay. Good not recovery. The yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we, we just talked about murdering our parents all the time. I hope Deb does not hear this. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, it was weird. This is a trippy one. I was not sure what the fuck to think at the end of this. I just thought, what? Like it was just basically is... we got to see this poor, uh, I don't know, kid. Like this his, kid, yeah. His like descent into madness, and like this therapist was like, oh, come on. But what? What if? He didn't? And like the kid was yeah. trying to rationalize it. Like, no, it's not my fault. Like I'm upholding their values. Like, well. What if they were lying? They were shitty people. Dude, I'd like, no. so pissed. It's like they, they're, not, they're not lying. Oh, well, I was their employee, so. <laughs> Get so, dicked so, on. So what if he comes back and he's like, he realizes that the therapist is the one who kills him, and he's like, I got the glasses. I'm going to go and kill the therapist. They have a but glasses then, battle. They, oh. mm-hmm. Therapist is like, you think you could kill me with those? Here, I got I the ending. Those. I got the ending. They start going. Oh, it's whoever could tell them to shut up first, right? Because they have to <laughs> speak it. So the therapist uh-huh. is like, yo, I've been doing this for years. He immediately tells him to silence. Like, now you can't use your glasses. He thinks he has the kid defeated, but then the kid reveals the morals of his parents. They taught him to not look down on others and taught him sign language. So he signs to oh, die. No. <laughs> and, then he... <laughs> and then he kills the therapist. <laughs> I didn't even it's think like about a, that. It's like a derp ass version of Naruto. He starts doing hand seals. <laughs> yeah. Like he's like oh. maybe the kid's crawling on the ground and like it's the classic, like the the guy's kicking him around, like, oh I fucking defeated you, and he's just doing slow signs, you know? Yeah. And then he signs die. Gets oh. a heart attack in the middle of it. And he's you like, you this? could have that one for free, Ray. You could have that one. I was, <laughs> I was just thinking whoever's first to prescribe them like uh some medication to some knock the fuck on out. Yeah, like I figure the guy's a therapist, Zanny. so he's gonna like fucking psychoanalyze him the whole time. So you go straight for the can't speak and it's like now i can talk down to you for 20 minutes and you can't do anything that would be kind of cool i do yeah. like that the villain's monologue yeah i that that's our favorite my favorite part of this whole session is to to figure out where it's gonna go and we give them free ideas and it's just all <laughs> fucked <laughs> but this is such a flip as to like his other story that i'm gonna read yeah i know yeah. it's it's really different that's why i was like we had two from this guy and i was like oh let's just both put them in the same one and then when we were reading it i was like they're very different stories and like it really is and they're not long like i think mine was 20 yours was 35 or something like that and they yeah. do a very good job of like hey here's a little story i had here you go but i will say if you read the fall first and then you got to look at divas and looked at just the front cover you're like oh this guy's got problems should we <laughs> yeah. send him an email yeah. real quick is he okay but yeah yeah it's a, it's crazy okay so let's move on so we can get to his next one but that's gonna be last so stay tuned to the end for divas we're gonna move on to cafe bois by Sastra123. All right, so we start in like a high school setting and we see a girl getting hustled for money from these two guys. Um, They're just asking for more money. 
when out of nowhere this guy enters with a roundhouse kick to the main uh, bully hustler's face and we're introduced to the delinquent Saiken, who's uh, our presumed MC. Um, this kind of causes the hustler to freak the fuck out, and he's like, I don't want anything to do with this. Here's all the cash. And Saiken kindly gives most of the money back to this girl, because protection ain't free. We get a little bit more backstory as we're in class on Sai, um, and basically he's the rich kid who has got ties with the, the mafia through his family, and he pretty much does whatever the fuck he wants. So later night, that night, um, we see Sai sleeping, and um, it's like a twilight situation. A hooded figure joins in and just starts watching him and basically says, hey, um, you have way higher spiritual power than average people, uh, so I'm going to take this. And just it should also be noted that this guy's got two large floating blobs um, attached to him. We're not sure what they are. Sai then wakes up, and he's in a world that's filled with Sakura trees, and he calls the uh, hooded figure a cosplayer and asks what the hell he's doing. This is when we get an explanation that this is the hooded figure's pocket dimension, his spirit world, uh, that he created and he has full control of. Sai asks the stranger if he wants to catch these hands, and the stranger replies that he's going to kill him. The stranger uses some floaty boys to protect himself from size like sick ass flips and shit. Like I don't know how he was able to do this stuff in this world, but he's pulling some really cool shit off. He gets his ass kicked and he's thrown into a wall. The guy threatens to kill him, and then Sai wakes up to this girl named Lily and her dog named Doggy. She is also someone who's been abducted by the stranger over a year ago, and the dog's also been there. She's been staying at her house, um, a cafe that she used to work at when she was in the real world that her parents owned. And in some like sick, twisted form, this stranger created it for her and even gave her uh, supplies to survive off of. After pouring some tea, Lily explains that the stranger abducted them to make himself more powerful by consuming their spirit energy, which manifests as the strange floaty boys. He keeps them alive as their energy recharges daily, so he harvests from them. So basically, he just kind of siphons from them, their gauge refills the next day, keeps going, and he keeps getting stronger from that. It takes skill to be able to release your spirit the way that she does, but over time, it recharges less and less and ultimately die. Sai heard enough of this, and so he decided he's going to go fuck this guy up because he wants to get out of this world. And before he can get away too far, Lily summons her spirit and takes the Sakura leaves around her and is able to trip him from under his feet. She tells him that he's not strong enough and that they need to train, and if the two of them combine forces, that they might be able to stand a chance against him. So after about nine months of training, they arrive to the Stranger's Coliseum that he's built in this world. They break in and they find what they call now the Reaper, and he's just sitting there watching TV and eating fruits, and pretty much this is all he does all the time. This is his thing. They start to fight, and Reaper immediately summons multiple spirit clones, and although they're super fast, they're able to overcome them, and Sai tries to land a sneak attack from the rear, but is immediately blocked and shoved away. This gives Lily enough time to quickly attack, which causes Reaper to try and dodge. When he's jumping back, he gets hit by a rogue rock from the explosion, and this is when we get a reveal of his face. He's got blood all over, and he starts having flashbacks to when he used to get bullied. Uh, basically about him bleeding a lot. It's a little weird. Um, I'm not sure if he just was uh, bleeding because they beat the shit out of him or he just randomly burst into blood. Kind of weird. We didn't get any... The nose, uh, nose bleeds. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he could be a fucking uh, pervert. We're just going to go with pervert. <laughs> so Reaper starts getting pissed and he starts to release all of his spiritual pressure in a classic bleach sense and the Colosseum starts to shake. This is when the real battle starts, and Sai is quickly pinned by multiple cement pillars to the gut. Didn't even get a chance to really do anything. Lily also tries to retaliate, but is quickly caught in a giant spear uh, clutch. All hope seems lost, and we get a small flashback of Lily asking Sai to promise her to come visit her in the real world, should they defeat Reaper. And Lily calls out for help. That's when Doggy shows up, and he starts casting a massive spirit bomb TM. This has nothing to do with any other franchises. And he nails Reaper in the gut, which sends him flying and blows up the wall. This is able to free Lily and Sai. And then Lily explains that the dog was one of the first inhabitants and has been there for over five years. The, the dog's spirit is abnormal and is unaffected by the Reaper siphoning, so he doesn't lose any of his spiritual uh, powers. 
as the time goes on. This act hardens their, the two of them's resolve, and then they're prepared for a counterattack. But before they do anything, Doggy starts powering up another spirit bomb right next to them and aimed right at them, which causes them to both freak out. Sai goes over and tries to grab him, gets bit, and then he realizes out of some weird inference from the dog that he wants to be higher up in the air. So he creates a trampoline and jumps up in the air. And now the spirit bomb is getting larger. Lily adds her Sakuras, and then the two of them add more of their spirit to this bomb. This causes Reaper to also prepare for an all-out attack, and it's basically a, a final bleach clash. And they shoot, and it kind of fades to black, and we see all four characters are in a weird limbo area with rocks floating around. This is when Reaper starts to explain that all he wanted was to be stronger and to prove that he wasn't the type to bleed. Uh, he then goes on to explain that they will be sent back to the normal world, but he will be exercised, so apparently he was some form of a spirit. Uh, as he begins to fade away like an Olkiora, he basically says to Sai, like, hey, you know, I did some research on you. If you just kind of change your, ass, your, your, your view on life, things will get better. And he apologizes to Lily for taking away her freedom. And in his final statement, he thanks them both for realizing that all he wanted was closure at the end, not the strength. Lily again asks Sai to meet her in the real world with Doggy as they all fade into a very bright light. Sai wakes in a hospital and he's been in a coma for over a year. He recalls the events almost as like a, a vivid dream and now he's able to see Ghost and he's also lost his urge to constantly fight. He's back at school and he bumps into the girl that he protected at the beginning of the story and uh, he turns a new leaf by returning the money that he had taken off the top. While in class, uh, we get a new transfer student being introduced to the, the student group while Sai is kind of reminiscing about the girl he was with. And it turns out that this new transfer student is Lily. Once he sees her, all the memories start flooding back and she's asked to go sit next to him. He says, hey, Lily. And she's like, hey, do you remember our promise? So clearly she's remembered him. He's also in this time adopted Doggy without realizing it and also subsequently named it Doggy. That's when uh, we go to the final page and it's this nice little colored piece where they go to the balcony on the school roof and they start to hold hands and Sai just basically reflects on his self changes. And he says, despite seeing and despite having Reaper uh, done all this to Lily, he still appreciates what he did for them, even though it was a bittersweet ending. And that's where we end. So it was uh, it was kind of sweet, kind of weird, and it just went everywhere. And we got like a nice little happy ending that she worked at Cafe Bois, and that was her thing, and that's where we got our our title. So it's weird, like I when I was reading it, I just assumed that he like kind of abducts the person. And like yeah. puts him inside, but then you find out that the body was still in the real world, and they were in a coma. Like so he, he was in a coma for a mind. year. So he basically like abducted their soul, would be my yeah. guess, yeah. and like took it in. Yeah. So that makes it like that chick, uh, Lily. She was in there for a long time. Yeah. Well, no, she so was like, what she was her? What was her body doing? Were her parents just holding on to the body the whole time? Like it's like Sao Sam. Like five years to be in a coma is a long, well, like a long time for a dog too. Yeah. She she was in there for a year and nine months. Like you would think the dog died. Like who's holding the yeah, dog's exactly. body yeah, for five up. years? Then you get that fucking sad scene from Futurama where it's just the dog sitting on the sidewalk for fucking the rest of his life. And you're like, oh, man, that's so that, not cool. That part for me, like, I, I read that. I was like, oh, that's a little weird. It's like uh, yeah. the, the body is still there. Like, I just assumed that it would be, like, and take it, all the people. And yeah. uh, you've already inferred it. But, yeah, they, their body's there the entire time that they are in the spirit world. There's no, like, time lapse effect. Like, he didn't live a year and it was only a day. Like, yeah. he was full on gone for a whole year. It's pretty he, fucking here's what crazy. I'm saying. Crazy. Ret retcon the body part. Take that part out, okay? Yeah. Then we turn it into Zatch Bell, okay? So we turn, oh! it, we turn it into, like, you got to go fight all the other guys with the powers, you know, to win whatever tournament. or I don't fucking know. Big picture guy, you, okay? You just want a tournament arc. So you turn it into that, all right? And everybody's got the cool spirit powers and this different energies. And you find out that, like, let's say Sai and Lily, they don't want to capture anybody to put it inside of their spirit world because they're against yeah. that. So they're fighting all the other people who are, like, abducting these people with high spiritual whatever to take them into their bodies and fight them. So they're, like, fighting against the system. But then oh. they meet the one guy who he's going around being a good guy, and he's taking 
people who are like terminal and putting him into his spirit world so they can live longer and they can live a happy life. Oh, so then he has crazy. to fight alongside of them as like a friend. Yeah, he's secretly super powerful because of that. Yeah, oh, he's, yeah, he's strong, but then he's part of their team. And then eventually he finds somebody that he can't defeat. And all of the people inside of him, he can't fight without killing them all because they take their spiritual pressure. And they're like, hey, listen, we've lived well enough. You've been really good to us. So they all give up their life to make him win the fight. That's some crazy shit. And then you find That's... out that the first person he saved was like his best friend or, mm-hmm. or something like, like that. Younger brother yeah. or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There you go. Mm-hmm. Or like his first love. That was like, yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. And then she was, oh. she, everybody's just so thankful that they got like a few extra years that they were like, listen, you've been really oh. good to us. We don't want to see you die. So then he wins the fight and he cries because he's so sad everybody died. I'm just saying that's a retcon that. Damn, that's fucking good. I like that idea yeah. a lot. Is that Zatch Bell with the Make Wish Foundation? What the <laughs> fuck is that? <laughs> I'm just saying Zatch Bell in terms of like you go and you fight people. I would just, you know, pull it out. How the pull f- that. Using Did a reference. pull that out your ass or do you have notes on this? Because I'm curious. Like, uh, did you just run with this My shit? notes are three lines for this one. So Holy I just, fuck I just, me. I was thinking nice. about it while you were talking. I was like, that'd be really good. if like, Because obviously what the guy, the main bad guy in this is doing is horrible. Like he's stealing the yeah. spirit from these people. But I was just thinking, what if there's a good version of it where it's like they're not affected by any ailment or anything so like yeah. you can take people in and like they can live like and he builds them houses and stuff yeah so like if you took a good person like listen i'm gonna take these oh, people dude. who like maybe they're poor or, like it could be anything it's like i'm gonna give them like the best Just life they can ever have at the, at the it's worst, like i'm gonna make the thing. best like penultimate like penultimate is second best but the best city that they could ever live in like worry free and they could just go live forever I was fake crying to your story, and then I actually had real fucking tears because I was fake crying for so long because that was the longest fucking addition. Don't have eye drops. Yeah, but holy shit. I mean, let the guy run with it. Give him that fucking <laughs> – give him the right. <laughs> yeah, you get that for free. So Yeah, it was a cool one-shot. I like the concept yeah. of it, but yeah, there was a lot of like weird plot holes. I don't know. Did that guy die from bleeding so much? Did he just have a fucking hemorrhage thing? I don't know because yeah, and he said if, he was going to be exercised, so I don't know if he was already what dead. What if he was, he was dead. a spirit, yeah. or if the, like he was, he was actually a, human? I don't know how that works. He could have been like an evil spirit, kind of like a hollow, yeah. and then just going and around. And I, I imagine more. it's not supposed to be thought into so much because it's a one shot. It's like, oh, here's a cool thing. Here's like what kind of what's going on. Cool action yeah. scene. Yeah, um, a lot I'll, of like the advice he gave was kind of surface level. Like, yeah. hey, bud, you know, you're being a dick. I don't do be like dick. that. It's very shonen where it's like, hey, you've beat me. Like here, here's some life advice. Like I do like that, and That's I really, how this shit works. <laughs> I really, really like the fact that the last page was color. Where like they went to go see the flowers. I was, super cool. I was like, yo, that's a sweet touch. Like that's really nice. cool. And I like Lily. Uh, Doggy was hit. I, yeah, whatever. That was it's a little, classic was, OP nonverbal yeah. character. You know, that was a little weird, but it was. I like that as well. It was fun. It was a fun manga, and it, it's yeah. Like I like just reading. I can see like yo, let's like let's get more people with powers. That'd be fun. Because they, this is just the one shot to make sure, like, hey, this is the world. Yeah. They could totally rewrite it, like you said, and yeah. just do like we could get the nine months of their training, and the which guy I, could they have don't have to. I'm just more. saying that's where my mind went immediately. So yeah, but if he had way more spirits that he consumed instead of just the dog and Lily from the beginning, like you know, oh, he's super super powerful, you know, and get that nine month training arc yeah. of him going through and finding. Or what if people. like you're fighting the bad guy and you find out that he's got a lot of spirits inside of him that like you know they're having a good time, like they like it in there. Then, oh then yeah. What do you do? Oh yeah, People classic want dilemma. To be pirates and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he could be the guy that's like, I'm just trying to save all the terminally ill children mm-hmm. from the cancer mm-hmm. hospital, and then you're like, oh fuck, like, we yeah, need to leave. You two just killed me, but you didn't go one block over and see my hot hospital playground that I had all of the kids in, and you guys just screwed him. Yeah, and they were just the two sacrifices to keep mm-hmm. him alive and yep. to keep the spirit world going because it's just a hospital, yep. you know. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm hurt. I am hurt. You, you just destroyed let's, him, man. Let's go to Jose's. I can't do this. <laughs> so that was Cafe Bois by Sostra123. We're going to finish off with Divas. That is once again by Ray Kurayami. And just to note, this is completely different. You do see that first cover and you're just like, damn. Cover okay, very similar. The rest one. of it, not so much. Yeah. Uh, we start off with this very small looking guy. He's kind of a kid almost, I would say. Kid size. And he's walking through this very nice uh, quadrant is what they refer to him. And it's very, you know, uh, very like a kingship-ish. Like there, there's a very castle polished. in the background. Yeah, very polished and stuff. And the whole time he's just kind of plotting. He's like, oh, I guess I could take it from the air. You know, all these techniques to conquer this area. And he's so deep in thought that all of a sudden he hears murder princess or something. And it catches his eye. Um, as he looks to this direction, he sees a young girl in there asking for help. And when he approaches, it's a girl with one horn. 
So I was just like, oh, instantly I was like, oh, that's cool. Maybe, you know, they, they hate her because she's kind of like a monster or a demon or something like that. But you see that the kid also has one horn. And uh, he basically tells her, he's like, hey, if you want to live, you got to go with me. Take my hand. Uh, and that's what he does. But as that happens, everyone is shouting. The guards are starting to come after them. And he pretty much picks her up and deuces out. He's jumping over buildings and kind of lands down in this faraway area. And it's it's kind of funny. I love the facial, uh, like, all the faces they're all making at, at this point. So he's just like, hey, we, we got a dip. Please follow me. And so he takes her hand and they run away. Uh, he gets to this part and he explains that they have to go through a train. But it's out of that quadrant and so he finally enters this part and this giant hand which i thought was a zombie uh comes out of the ground and it's a giant he calls it a gaia guardian guardian and so he trespassed and he did not get the guardian's blessing to be in that area he's like okay i'm gonna have to fight this so so we can get through and he kind of reveals to the girl that he's not an ordinary demon because this is all a city of demons he's uh what's known as a divas but he's got like a tail. He's got like these really long ears and all this stuff. And he's super powerful enough to he just takes this thing out instantly. They're on the train and the girl the whole time is just like, oh, you're not really a demon. You're you're like a divas. What's 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 called a divas? Uh, in it, you find out that there were humans, and I don't know if there still is currently humans, but they talk about how humans used magic to betray them and basically lock them away. Uh, to which you find out that the girl is actually her ancestors were human is what I got from it. That's what I got from it too. So she apologizes for that. And then it turns out that uh, the Divas were actually the ones who gave the humans their magic abilities. Um, you know, until they were betrayed and everything. But they ended up finally getting to what I guess is the station and they see his brother who reminds me a lot of Riku. Just like early on young Riku, which I thought was dope. I love me some Riku. Uh, but he's kind of taller, and then they're doing like the the little the taller brothers, the older brother thing, and so he refers to him as as brother. And then the whole time he's just like, "Who's this, by the way?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, I don't I don't I don't really know." She she reveals herself to be the princess. Um, her name is Erica X. Godfried, yeah, that sounds about right. Who says thank you very much for saving me? And then they're basically on their way to back to their house. As they're heading back to the house, he get, he ends up getting stuck carrying her and stuff because you know you gotta honor rock paper scissors. But they do say it differently here, and I rem I caught that and I put that in my notes. They say it paper rock scissors. Bullshit. Right. I mean, eventually the girl feels better and they walk and they finally get to his house. Uh, to which. I don't know if she's their sister, but she comes out running and she's like, Captain, you're you're here. After, you know, just a little bit of talking, she ends up finding out that, who she is. And she's like, oh, you can't look like this. You look, you know, absolutely terrible. So she goes and changes her. Uh, and meanwhile, I don't know if you noticed, but everyone who's with them also has one horn. Uh, she ends up getting changed up and everything. And then the princess is just kind of sad, even though they're kind of like letting her into the family, so to say. Uh, she keeps grabbing onto this pendant and... As she's doing so, uh, she talks about how her sister ended up betraying her, her younger sister, and framed her for the murder of their father, the king. Uh, she is then told that she has to give up this one thing because it's kind of like letting go of the past and moving forward, but she doesn't want to because it's her sister's and, you know, she's got that kind of sentimental value towards it. Eventually, she reluctantly gives it up and gives it to the main character, who he... I don't know if it activated when he touched it, but as soon as they touched it, it literally teleported them right back to the first spot, which I thought was pretty funny. As they're all there, her sister's there and is pretty much like telling everybody that they're going to get executed and she's still blaming her for the murder, to which our main character just super saiyans out of that hold and just says, I don't care what anyone says, we're going to do things our way. We're all a family. And so... Basically, what they do is she ends up, like, bike dropping it, saying that, yeah, I'm part of this family now. And we find out that uh, Vic v Adis, which is the main character, is going to be the Hell King. And he just vows it. We're the organization called Victim, and we're and I'm going to be the Hell King. Yeah. So he very much one-pieces it. Uh, 
Yeah, and then we get the last page where it's it's like a cool little like sketch drawing of it. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice. Yeah, yeah. it was, it was super short and simple. I kind of um. I don't know if you guys saw, but when they th were doing the, like, uh, oh, the uh, humans didn't originally have magic. It was like it was the the demons, the like, divas, or divas yeah. who gave it to them. So when he was given that explanation, he she apologizes. He's like, oh, I'm sorry for what my people did. And then he goes, like, yeah, your people. Like, I think he's insinuating that's not her people that did it or he doesn't believe that. Because I, I, I she got that he didn't believe it. Yeah, she apologizes, and then he kind of just like, I kind of dismisses that it's not really her people that did it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's setting uh, something else up, but I, I don't, I that, that was weird to me. I like, I read it's like, oh, so was it not? It's like, is that not the story as it went down? Because he seemed very dismissive of like, oh, it's not your people. Like it wasn't actually. That, your that, that's how I I read it yeah. too, but I just wasn't too sure about myself, so I didn't include it. But I kind of yeah. like, I it, in a weird turn of events, I kind of wish we knew more about the world. Which I right? feel like most yeah, right? <laughs> most mangas we get overloaded with. Like, here's what you need to know about the world. I I, I can't complain because you know it was short reading this week, mm -hmm. which I always appreciate. But at the same time, they still had this was only 32 pages, with one of them being the the back end page for the little doodle that Jose ta talked about. So that's like 23 more pages that could have easily added in. And that could have been world building. Like, yeah, I like I liked like the quadrant. Like they got to take over the quadrant, and they got it. They want to rule the realm as a whole. But it's like, yeah. what is like a quadrant? Like what what am yeah. I looking at? Like a world yeah. map? You know. I wish um, I knew what the Hell King was too. Like yeah. what was his? Are they like, in Hell? Purpose? Because all the other villagers had two horns. Yeah, they all had yeah. two horns, and they're all demons. Yeah, but he's a diva, so I wanted to know what kind of like separated them from demons. Yeah. And like they mentioned, when he goes diva's from, he gets the ears. And it was mm -hmm. like, oh, it's like that's a, a the ears note of tail. significance. It, but oh, I didn't even notice the ears, my guy. I was confused. Yeah, so it's like, and I, I really liked the banter with the, uh, the Earth Gaia and the guy yeah. who was like, he was like, oh, can you just let us through? It was like, dog, you trespass. Like, oh, well, I just want to do yeah. the usual. <laughs> it's like the thing. <laughs> like clearly, they fight a lot. Is what I get from that. It's like they do this dance multiple times. I yeah, because like he, he he did right away call them a trespasser, and he's like, yeah. you did not have my blessings to go through here. Yeah, and I like he was like, oh, well, I just thought I would do the usual, you know, just see if you would let me through. And I, I like really did like that. Main character. Yeah. He's like the G Donbo. <laughs> yes, <the> yes. <laughs> the main character reminds me a lot of Meliodas from uh, Seven Deadly Sins. A little bit, a little bit. I can see that. And so, like, I, I, there were just some things that I was like, this is the one that we read this week. We were like, man, I would like to know more. It's like I would just, there was some more stuff that I was like, man, I, I could have liked knowing more of that. Uh, yeah. But all in all, I thought it was pretty fun. I thought it was good. Yeah. It's straightforward. Like, hey, we're uh, the group victim. We want to take over the quadrants to become the ruler of the realm, the Hell King. I was like, okay, I get behind that. Especially if each uh, quadrant is going to be, like, different. Like, maybe, like, this one is, like, a kingdom, like a classic kingdom. Yeah. The next one is something else. So, like, that could be a lot of fun. Yeah. Ooh, one one could be like a very woodsy area or something like that. And what if it's like it turns into like a game, you know, where it's like once you take over the quadrant, like somebody else could possibly take it over, so you gotta hold all of the quadrants. Oh, hate, oh turf it. war, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So each each one of them's gonna possess a, a piece of the quadrant. So like they could get like four out of the five of the quadrants, like cool, we just need the last one that's like, oh fuck, someone just took our original one. Shit. It's like a shitty game of risk. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it would be annoying probably as a reader, but it's like, you know, I don't know. I don't know how it works. Fun ideas. I got like this like just inkling of a vibe that they're not really the good guys at the end. Like I, I understand the sister is probably not a good person. She's definitely not. Like, yeah, no. she is not a good person. But Step I feel sister's pretty gnarly. Like the way uh the main character or the main guy is like always like, Oh, you like almost swear yourself to me pretty much. Like come with me if you want to live. I feel like, like he's more there. of an outlaw kind of guy. But he's got like that royal pompousness, like you you belong to me. Like even though he says they're family, he's like she kind of belongs to us. And it felt like there was just like a slight like we need to know. It's gonna be kind of like you find out they have ulterior motives, and that's when the character is gonna be like, oh shit, do I want to join these guys? I don't know. I got like that little. I can see of a that vibe. maybe being a thing. Like I could see maybe let's say he is related to the current Hell King or something, and like he was outcast from that. So he's yeah. like, I am royalty, but I'm like the lowest tier of royalty. Uh, so like, you have to does. swear yourself to me so I can like go back and do my thing. I could see that. If it is, that's a lot like Seven Deadly Sins. 
I was getting kind of like a Kamiga Kill vibes, like you know, like oh, I see what you mean yeah. at the beginning, where you're like, oh, who's the good guy now? Mm -hmm. Like everyone was good, now everyone's bad, now everyone's good again, kind of thing like that. Um, so I felt like it could, like it could go like that, where ultimately they're probably on the good end, but they're like questionable kind of thing. I would yeah, like I don't that. know. I I don't see that as much because I feel like they made the stepsister so obviously bad. It's yeah. like there wasn't a lot of black and white going on, or like gray but area. Gray it could was also very be black bad. and white. Well, she could be black, they could be gray, she, and our main character is also in, like, a lighter gray, you know, more like a, you know. Sure. Yes, yes, yes. Sure. Okay. Thanks. I'm so, glad we're on a telep telepathic thing. The three we did this week was uh, The Fall by Rei Kurayami, then we did Café Bois by Sastra123, and then we did Divas by Rei Kurayami once again. So let's go ahead and pick which one we like the best, which we want to see more of, yada, yada. Uh, Josh, was there one that stuck out to you? Any one that you liked more than the others and why? Um, so this was a, a weird week. I'm going to probably go with Divas. I thought Cafe Bois, if went with, if they went with like your thing, that would be fucking sick. Like if this what was you're just saying a one is shot you like to Sam's create the story. world. If they took like, even like, m like twisted around Sam's story a little bit, but they like remade this into like a series with something like Sam's, that'd be sick as fuck. The fall, I actually really fucking love when the main character like turns out to be the bad guy and everything's like a fucking psychological thriller. That shit just Some death turns note me stuff. on. Yeah, it just turns me on. But I, I like Divas. It just had like a nice, it had like the most world uh, to explore, and I want to know more about it rather than the other two. But okay. yeah, so I'm, I'm going to go with Divas. Cafe Bois. What if okay. it gets so big where they start fighting at <laughs> planetary levels? And they use a whole planet's souls to fight. So like, this, I hate you. This hey, so guy rolls up Gary with a Gurren planet. He's using his whole planet as like, yeah, on Earth. I've taken all of those souls and they're inside of me. That's how I fight. Oh, and then I take quadrant four of the diva section <laughs> and I've taken all their souls <laughs> and thrown them. And in then each someone other. else rolls up and is like, oh yeah, uh, the planet Yorkshire and Galaxy whatever. It's like I already <laughs> took that one, so I already got that. <laughs> so, and then they fight in a planetary level on like Mars. What and if then, they have like, to go to the Fire North Mountains? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it could. It, I, uh, listen, the, there's so much galaxy out there. I, I still think we're going to get a cosmic sized doggy uh, showing up to do a they cosmic They have to take size. the souls of all of the animals, too, if the doggy is. This is true. Well. And hey. somehow Goku shows up and he's just like, everyone yeah. give me your non TM I mean, spirit bomb. Goku might be from this universe and just might do it in a lighter way because yeah. the spirit That's bomb true, takes yeah. the spirit from the people. It is true. Oh, my God. Mm hmm. Wow, so they just merged like Zatch Bell, Bleach, and DBZ all into one beautiful non associated package. I love it. All right, Jose, which one was your favorite? Uh, I'm gonna have to go for Divas as well. It is more of the, the shonen trope for me and stuff. I, I just kind of want to see where it goes. I want to see who the Hell King is. I kind of want to explore more of the world. I did, however, almost pick his previous work. Um, the fall, the fall. Just, mm -hmm. just because I like, I don't know, a dark and gritty kind of stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it was like, like a kind of interesting, like mental I was down like, mm, spiral. I feel like this could be pretty sick. Guys, uh, no, just wait Divas. till Cafe Bois adds my additions, okay? <laughs> I and then did like you, Cafe Bois. You guys Bois, are gonna yeah. look so dumb. So. This is gonna get posted, and the author is gonna chime in like, "I'm going to run with this." <laughs> <laughs> or he's like, "I hate you guys." Listen, just go oh. straight to Gurren Logan levels, okay? People love Gurren Logan, so it's true, dude. I do very much. We talk about it almost weekly, man. Oh my god, <laughs> there's no manlier man than Kamina. I did and like the... Divas the most though, as well. So yeah, I would have yeah. picked Divas. It... I gotta say, Divas felt kind of like a, a darker version of like Fairy Tale. I never really started Fairy Tale, but that's like how it felt. Where there's like Nazi. I remember the first episode, Nazi shows up, and then Lucy's kind of like hanging out, and she gets sucked into the guild, which was cool. But like, I would like to see where this goes. There could be like other mm -hmm. groups that are like victim. Yeah, I but think this one seems like the most fleshed out, kind of more fun. Uh, yeah, like I said, the quadrant system seems like it's a lot of fun and all that kind of stuff. And this week was like weird because none of them are like comparable to each other. We have like, like you said, a psychological yeah. thriller, a like spirit realm, potentially Gurren Logan as isekai thing. almost. Yeah. Oh yeah, pretty much. And then we have Divas, which is like a shonen trope, which is really cool. But they're all over the place. You can't really compare the three of them. Yeah. Congratulations to Ray Kuriyami. You had good odds, two out of three. So I'm glad you won. Divas is the winner this week. Congratulations.
with that we will see you guys next friday for another video we'll be doing another three entries if you have some last minute submissions to get in go ahead and do them because come december we will stop reviewing and then we'll just announce our ultimate winner and move from there thanks for watching be sure to leave a like and subscribe on the video comment with what you guys would have picked there's three really good ones this week so i'm interested to know in the comments which of the three you thought was the best with that we'll see you guys next time thanks for watching have a good one